Hello and welcome back to iSpy and today I am with Lens Anatomy and in this video first we will see what is lens then we will cover shape of lens with lens dimensions and terms related to that then we will look into location of lens that way the lens is situated in the eye and its attachments then parts of the lens and lens structure start with what is lens so lens is a transparent avascular refracting structure in the eye which helps in focusing light rays on the retina and as lens takes part in refraction of light lens should have some power so what is the power of lens and the answer is lens contributes about a one third to the total power of eye which is about 15 to 17 diopter next is shape of lens and terms related to that so shape of lens is spherical at birth and biconvex in adults as you can see in this picture the biconvex shape of lens in which the posterior surface is more curved than the anterior surface so here if i talk about radius of curvature of these surfaces then radius of curvature is always inversely proportional to the curvature itself and as anterior surface is less curved or I can say flatter so if I draw a complete circle for this curvature then this would be radius of curvature of anterior surface which is about 10 millimeter and if I make a complete or full circle for posterior surface which is more curved than the anterior surface or I can say steeper then this would be radius of curvature of posterior surface which is about 6 millimeter and I think now you got it that more curved surface has lesser radius of curvature and less curved surface has more radius of curvature now there are two points to know on anterior and posterior surface of lens are anterior pole and posterior pole in which anterior pole is the center of anterior surface and posterior pole is the center of posterior surface and distance between these poles is measured as thickness of lens or entire posterior diameter of the lens which is about 3 millimeter at birth and increase to about 6 mm in older age. So we talked about shape of lens which is biconvex but biconvex is in cross sectional view. If we see lens from front or back of the eye then lens has a circular shape. So lens is a combination of two circles anteriorly and posteriorly and where these two circles meet we call this as equator of the lens and in cross sectional view we say these two points as equator which is actually a complete circumference. Now equatorial diameter of lens is about 6.5 millimeter at birth which reaches to 9 to 10 millimeter in adults and it is generally measured in nasal to temporal dimension. Now, how the lens is suspended at its place. So, the reason for that is the equator of the lens is surrounded by ciliary zonules or called suspensory ligaments, which has the one end attached to the lens in complete 360 degree circumference, and the other end is attached to the ciliary processes of ciliary body. Now we'll see location of lens. So the basic location of lens is behind the iris and in front of the vitreous. Or you can say lens is in contact with aqueous humor anteriorly and vitreous humor posteriorly. And the posteriorly, the transparent vitreous gel has a shallow depression in which lens is placed. That depression in vitreous gel is known as patellar fossa. And there is a little space present between this patellar fossa and posterior surface of lens which is known as Berger's space. Or retrolental space. 
Now we know that lens is situated in patellar fossa, but how is it attached to vitreous gel? So the attachment between posterior surface of lens and anterior vitreous is in a circular fashion by a ligament known as Weger's ligament or hyaloid capsular. And the strength of this attachment decreases with age. Now next is lens structure or parts of lens. So histologically lens is basically composed of three structures. And these structures are lens capsule, anterior lens epithelium and lens fibers. Which we'll see each one by one. Start with lens capsule. So when we say capsule, that means cover or a covering. So lens capsule is a transparent covering present all around the lens. Composed of type 4 collagen fibers and sulfated glycoaminoglycans. And it is the thickest membrane in the entire body. But as you can see in this picture, the thickness of lens capsule is not constant everywhere. Instead, it varies around the lens being thinnest at the posterior pole and thickest at the posterior pre-equatorial region. That is near the equator having thickness of 23 microns. Next is anterior lens epithelium which consists of single row of cuboidal cells in the central zone which becomes columnar at the equator. It is present just beneath the anterior lens capsule. And now if I am talking about anterior epithelium there will be a thought of posterior epithelium also. But let me clear this that there is no posterior epithelium after birth. Before birth, posterior epithelium is present and it is utilized in filling the central cavity of lens vesicle. Cells of epithelium are divided into two categories. A cells present anteriorly and E cells present at equator. In which A cells are involved in metabolism of lens and E cells which has capability of mitosis due to which these cells actively divide to form new cells which migrate posteriorly to become lens fibers and this process continues throughout life. So the part of eye which grows or continue to grow throughout life is lens. Part of lens is lens fibers which are of two types. So can be divided into two types. Central one is nucleus and the another peripheral is cortex in which nucleus occupies major part of the lens about 84% and cortex occupies about 16%. Nucleus is metabolically inactive because nucleus has the oldest fibers formed earliest. In uh, metabolically inactive means no metabolic activity takes part in nucleus of the lens. And cortex is metabolically active and has youngest fibers of the lens which are formed the uh, at the last. Now let's see both one by one. Now as you can see that nucleus has different zones. So let's see the zones of nucleus. And these zones are depending on the stage of life the lens are formed or the lens fibers are formed. So the earliest formed nucleus is embryonic nucleus present most centrally and as its name implies 
embryonic nucleus which states that the nucleus formed in the embryonic phase of life it is part of the lens nucleus which contains oldest fibers formed up to 3 months of gestation then after that fetal nucleus form and contain fibers formed from 3 months of gestation to birth so when we born we have embryonic and fetal nucleus then fibers formed from birth to puberty are collectively called as infantile nucleus and as lens grows throughout life so after puberty whatever formed known as adult nucleus as lens grows and newer fibers formed so superficial lens fibers are added in a concentrically manner like the layers of an onion so my purpose here is to tell you the old fibers are in nucleus and in that two embryonic nucleus has the oldest fibers and youngest fibers are in cortex now the topic is lens sutures so first of all question is what is sutures so suture is a type of joint between two structures which held them tightly together by a fibrous tissue in lens sutures are where one lens fiber meets another lens fiber and generally these sutures are of y shaped so look at this picture as i told you lens has a equator where the anterior and posterior surface of lens meets and at the equator of lens we saw that epithelial cells actively divide and form new fibers and those fibers migrate inward in the lens so this is the point where these fibers meet and forming a suture in which anterior suture are upright y and posterior sutures are inverted y one more important point here is that these sutures are present in each nucleus except embryonic nucleus which lacks sutures and the reason for lacking sutures in embryonic nucleus will see in embryology of lens that why embryonic nucleus has not sutures so now when we know about parts of lens let's talk about the refractive index of lens which is not uniform throughout the lens and depends on the fibers of lens and as we have just seen that the lens has two types of fibers one is nucleus which is dense and has more refractive index and other one is cortex which is less dense and has less refractive index so refractive index of lens ranges from peripheral 1.392 to central 1.42 now lens nutrition but before lens nutrition let me tell you about blood supply of lens so lens has no blood supply lens has no blood vessels in it lens is an avascular structure and no nerve supply also there is in lens so the question is from where lens gets its nutrition and answer is lens gets its nutrition majorly from aqueous humor anteriorly and a small contribution by vitreous humor posteriorly but in an embryogenesis lens gets its nutrition from hyoid artery which comes from the back of the eyeball travel within the space called cloquic canal and supplies the posterior surface of lens and by 8 months of gestation this hyaloid artery and cloquic canal will disappear but what if it does not disappear completely it can lead to congenital abnormalities and those abnormalities can be mittendorf dots and bergmeister's papilla 
Now let's see what is Mettand of Dots and Bugmeister's Papilla. Now let's have a look at the picture here and see this hyaloid artery and clockwork canal which is traveling from optic disc to the back surface of lens. So if it does not disappear completely, then the remnant of hyaloid artery on the posterior surface of lens is known as mittened of dots and remnant of optic at the optic disc is known as Bergmeister's papilla. We'll see again about mittened of dots in abnormalities of lens little more in detail. So this was all about anatomy of lens and in next part of lens video we'll see physiology of lens. Thank you for watching. Like, share, comment and subscribe.